for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship, and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we may also share in His glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Greetings, guys. It is me here with a message of the kingdom of heaven. Ah, guys, Paul here, guys, is speaking about suffering for Christ. You know, guys, if you go to Ephesians 3, Paul is speaking about the fact that he is the prisoner of Christ. And guys, I listen to Paul speaking like that. You know, Paul, when he came to my Lord, in fact, he, he was going to persecute the church in Damascus. You know, so he, he was on his way to persecute the church and Jesus interrupted Paul, you know, on his mission you know, and said, mm -mm, instead of you fighting against me, how about you and me work together. <laughs> oh, my Lord, you know. And he takes Paul to tell heaven, and Paul sees things. He says, I don't want to tell you about those things, you know. He says, I saw Jerusalem, guys. He says, I saw paradise. You know what I mean? So here, guys, Paul is saying that he is suffering with Christ. And guys, contrary to the popular belief from Pentecostal churches, because they be, they preach that uh, we are here, we are not going to suffer. We are here to enjoy life. You understand, guys? They're here to live a life. Ah, uh, guys, Paul says, I'm a prisoner of Christ. And he says, if we suffer with him, surely we will be uh, glorified with him. And guys, uh, Paul, this is a guy, guys, who understood what Jesus came to do. You know, guys, I'm trying my very best to make it to my Lord's kingdom. And when I get there, I'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you even start speaking to me about your preachings, about the podcast, mm-mm. With your eyes blazing with fire like that. Whoa, wait a minute. Where's Paul? <laughs> I need to see Paul. Whoa, where's Peter? I need to see Peter. Whoa, where's my brother John? I need to see John. Guys, these are the people who suffered for Christ. Paul says, I'm willing not only to be persecuted, but to die for Christ. Ah, oh, guys, he said, I count it all a loss. Mm, guys, when I hear a person speaks like that, oh, guys, I go crazy. You know what I mean? So he's saying that if you uh, uh, suffer with him, surely you'll be glorified with him. He says that if you are children, then you are heirs, co-heirs with Christ. You understand? Meaning that you should suffer. Guys, how do you suffer with Christ? Guys, how do you suffer with Christ? I'll tell you, you take up your cross and you follow him, meaning you give up your life. Ah, guys, you give it all up for him. Guys, you take your cross and you do his will. That's how you suffer for Christ. You know, guys, you look at the likeness of Peter saying, I am ready to die for you. And Jesus says, wait a minute. You know, guys, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, uh, they are trying to kill Jesus, you understand? And Peter take up a sword and he strike the ear of Malchus. You know, guys, Jesus goes to Malchus and he heals. You know, he puts back the ear. And, and guys, he looks at Peter. He says, no, 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 no. You are not going to die like that. Because anyone who strikes with a sword will die with a sword. You are going to die for me. You are going to suffer for me. How? You are going to do my father's will. How? You are going to take up your cross and you will follow me. You are not going to die with a sword. Mm -mm. But you are going to die for me. Ah, guys, he's saying you are going to suffer for me. Not now. Don't rush. Don't rush it. You will suffer for me. And guys, they died. Ah, guys, they suffered with him. Why? They took up their cross. How? They took up their cross and they died with him. And Paul says, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Ah, guys, mm, guys, I know what I'm talking about. No, guys, it's so easy when you just go to church on Sunday and go to church, you know, uh, on Wednesdays and you call yourself a Christian and you continue loving money and you continue loving the things of the world and you continue having sex outside marriage. Mm, guys, 
But when you really have to be a real Christian, when you stop loving money, when you stop loving the things of the world, when you stop having sex outside marriage, when you take up your cross and do his will, mm, ah, guys, the pain. You know, guys, for me, it's so difficult to even speak to people about Christ. It's so difficult, guys, because I have to tell you to stop loving money. Will you do that for someone you don't know? Mm. Ah, guys, ah, mm. guys, Paul knew Jesus. Mm. He was able to die for him. You guys, you don't understand. The guys, the guys, they persecuted them. Guys, John's eyes, they were gouged off. He was ready to die for Jesus. Ah, guys, mm, mm, mm. guys, I think about those guys, guys, ah, guys, my heart. They knew Jesus. Will you die for Jesus? Hmm. Ah, guys, will you give up sex with your partner outside marriage for Jesus? <laughs> guys, it's not a joke. Eh? It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's easy to claim to be a Christian. Giving up for Jesus, that's a whole different story. You can't give up your life for someone you don't know. They gave up their lives for someone they knew. They knew. Thomas, he says, let us go and die with him. Why? They knew him. They knew the love Jesus gave them. Guys, this is a guy who came down here and he gave us blood. And he said, I want you back to my father. Your, your father wants you back, but without me giving you this blood. Ah, guys, hands. Guys, his hands, pins going through his hands and feet. And Jesus sits, guys, in his thrones. And he, guys, he looks at Peter. And Peter is dying for Jesus. He's turning the world upside down. And Jesus says, my pain was worth it. Those pins going through uh, my feet and hands. They were dead. Paul, he says, I'm willing to die for him. I'm a prisoner of Christ. Jesus says, that pain was worth it. John, his eyes are gouged off. And Jesus says, my pain was worth it. I want him, guys, to look at my podcast. I want him, guys, to look at my preachings. When I go and stand in front of him, I want him to say, Nini, my pain was worth it. I want him to say, Nini, my pain was worth it. Ah, guys, I sit and I sympathize with his pain. Why? He's my, guys, he's my elder brother. He's the child of my father. That guy brought back my father to me. Guys, he is the glue to the family. He gave me blood. Guys, I'm going to stand by the truth. If you don't want it, switch it off. I'm not looking for followers. I'm not looking for listeners. I preach to a particular group of people. That's why I didn't advertise it. Why? Because I'm preaching to a group that says, I want the truth. I'm not going to pray to Mary. I'm not going to kiss statues. I want a group that says, I want to stick to the word. I am not going to listen to any message that is not in line with the word. I am not going to say there is no hell when Jesus has said there is hell. I am not going to listen to a message that says we should run after riches and the things of the world and forever forgiveness. Mm -mm. I want his truth. I am not going to listen to a message that says God is still writing more books. Mm -mm. He told John, he says, it is finished. He says no one should edit or omit. You understand? Guys, he says we should. Guys, he says we we are not to uh, invoke the spirit of the dead. Meaning, you are not going to worship both God and ancestors. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So I'm speaking to people who says I want to listen to the word. Guys, I always tell you, don't even listen to me. Why? I'm a prisoner of Christ. I've got nothing new. I've got no new messages. The only thing I'm telling you, stick to the word. That guy kicked me out of churches. Guys, he removed John. John was living in the forest, John the Baptist, because he did not want him to be influenced. He did not want him, you know, guys, to be pressured by people because he wanted to make sure that John stick to his word. You understand? He got me out of churches because he said, mm -mm, you are not going to make it to my kingdom. You must stick to my word. So I'm preaching to a different kind, a particular group of people. You understand? I don't know, guys, if I know what I'm trying to say. That's why I did not advertise this show. I'm not looking for followers. I'm not looking for listeners. I'm speaking to a particular group of people. Ah, guys, you know, I feel sorry sometimes for my nephew because I don't have a church, you understand? So I often, the one 
uh, who tell him uh, preachings and I tell him things. And guys, sometimes I feel sorry for him because I tell him, you know what? If you don't know the truth, Jesus will forgive you. You know, so he says to me, damn, don't tell me then. <laughs> You know, guys, he's always, guys, he's growing now. He's a teen. He's like, don't tell me then. <sighs> because if I know Jesus won't forgive me, others are busy doing these wrong things, loving money, loving the things of the world. And now you are telling me, now I know the truth, you know. And he says, please don't tell me. I don't want to live with you anymore. <laughs> And the guys, I feel sorry for the kid. The guys, ah, shame, what a pity. You know, I tend to remove people away from me because I have to preach the truth now. You understand? If you don't want it, I won't. Guys, no one is going to die in my watch. You know what I mean? And no one's blood is going to be requested from me. So when you don't want the truth, I have to stay away from you so that you don't suffer for me, guys. Because if you get closer to me, you have to stop loving money. You have to stop loving the things of the world. You have to stop sex outside marriage now. You understand? You have to obey that man. You have to take up your cross and follow him and do his will. Will you do that for me? No. No. Will you do that for Jesus? No. So... I let you be and you let me be. Guys, you do you, I do me. It's just the way it is. You know what I mean? That's how we talk in this generation. You do you and I do me. You know what I mean? So guys, Jesus, Paul is saying I'm suffering. So guys, I feel sorry for people who are close to me because I'm like, ah, you have to stop doing these things. Ah, guys, it's difficult. It's difficult. But guys, I'm a prisoner. I realize when I came back to Christ that damn, I'm a prisoner. Damn, I'm a prisoner. But guys, I'm not regretting. I'm not regretting because he promised me forever. He promised me New Jerusalem. He promised me paradise. And I want that. And I want that. You understand? So Paul is saying that uh, if you are heirs with him, if you are co-heirs, you understand, you will suffer for him. You will suffer with him. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Ah, guys, you don't know what I mean. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to tell you that you are going to suffer. You must be a prisoner, prisoner for Christ. Why? Because you love him. He is your brother. You sympathize with him. You know, guys, I look at daddy when Jesus was on the cross. Daddy is sitting there and he's got mixed emotions. A son he loves who's never wronged him. Daddy looks at him and he says, I love my son. But he feels so sad for him. He's feeling all that pain. But guys, the blood was being available for us. So daddy is like, oh, shame, my son. At the same time, he's like, I'm happy though because I'm getting back my children. You know, my children will be born again and come back to me. I'm getting back my children. You understand? In such a such a year, my child Nini will be born and will want to come back to me and will love me. But without Jesus going through this pain, there's no way Nini is going to come back to me. I don't know, guys, if you understand. So it's things like that. Even you, daddy saw that, well, this one loves me as well, but he or she cannot come back to me. Why? because they are dead. So Jesus has to go down there and give them blood. So daddy has mixed emotions. He's sitting there and he looks at Jesus and he says, shame, my son. He cries. Jesus says, he felt as if daddy he doesn't love him. Daddy has abandoned him. But no, no, daddy was also thinking about me because he loves me as much as he loves you. That's why verse 17 of Romans 8 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If we indeed, we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Ah, guys, so it's as if daddy was adopting us. Why? Adam killed us and we died. We were born spiritually dead. I was born spiritually dead. And Jesus comes and the spirit of your father is crying. Your spirit is saying, Abba, Father, is crying. The spirit of adoption because it's as if daddy is adopting us because I was born spiritually dead. You were born spiritually dead. You're going back to your father. You understand? And if Christ is your elder brother, you will sympathize with his pain. You will sympathize with pins going through his feet and hands. And you will say, you know what? I'm willing to die with you. I'm willing. Guys, if you're not willing to die for Christ, forget. Don't even claim to be a Christian. If you're not willing to take up your cross, don't even claim to, to be a Christian. If you're not willing to give up chocolate for Jesus, don't even claim to be a Christian. Why? If he is your brother, if, guys, you are to be glorified with him, you 
you should suffer with him because we are a prisoner of Christ until the